Well, welcome everybody to our webinar today of, on container gardening with fresh greens. Uh, my name is David Yost. Uh, I'm sure I've met and seen many of you, uh, but this is my first time in playing the host session. I'm filling in for Sally Burroughs that many of you know and have come to uh, develop a, a friendship and a relationship with her through these webinars. So please uh, bear with me. I'm a rookie, but I'm going to try to manage this whole event here and field the questions and everything. So before we get started, uh, I want to you know wish everybody that, uh, that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and are kicking, getting your uh, holiday season kicked off to a good, strong start on uh, good health and spending good quality time with your friends and family. But I also want to say that um, what we're going to do before we begin, we can't hear or see you, neither Peg nor I can, but we will communicate through the use of the Q&A box. So down there in the bottom of your screen in the menu, if you do have questions or want to convey any messages to us, just enter it in through that Q&A box. If for some reason we're not able to uh, get to your questions today, then Sally will follow up. She'll be able to, uh, to get these directed to myself or Peggy or get you back the response that you need on that. It may take a little bit longer than usual. Normally, Sally tries to get back to those same day, but she's out of town right now. And because of access to the internet and everything, it may take her just a few days longer than usual. So with that, it's really my pleasure, my honor, to get to introduce Peggy Beer uh, to everybody today, though she really needs no introduction. And we've been working side by side for over 20 years. and. Had the pleasure of hosting the, the TV show together and reminiscing and everything. But this is our first time doing a Zoom class together. And there's nobody better qualified that has uh, the experience both with gardening and knows the plants, but is a phenomenally talented designer to share ideas with us today on what you can do, uh, taking greens and things out of your garden and using all this to dress up your entrance and home for the holidays. So with that, I'm going to just turn it over to Peg. Thanks for being here. Good afternoon. And thank you, David, for giving them a little bit of a rundown on our experience together. While David may be first time doing exactly what he's doing at the moment, he is an extremely accomplished person. And we were laughing just before at some of the fun things that actually happened on the TV show. Not well, yes, on the TV show too, owner before. So we, we have shared and enjoyed uh, a lot of time together, teaching, learning, and teaching. And, and I think it's important to say in this time how wonderful a time that was because in 20 years, neither David or I had a crossword ever. We enjoyed what we did. We still are doing the same thing, not on TV, but I think that's pretty remarkable, you know? So I, I think that's important going into this Christmas season is to, if you ever think something, just bite your tongue, don't say it, okay? All right, let's get going. It's a lot about decorating all over, whether it's making bows or, getting the swags on your balcony, but we're going to talk about fun things that you can do outside in the garden today. And I hope that I'll give you enough of the basics that you will go out and try to do that. Because if you're going to put beautiful greens into a container, I'm not sure that there's a wrong way to do that, because they're gonna be lovely in any case. And I do believe in decorate, I'm a big container person and I keep containers going in all four seasons. And I have live things now that, that I'm enjoying with pansies and cabbage and kale and beautiful sticks coming out of it. But these are different. These will be um, greens done in containers. And I think we can bring up but just a couple of pictures that hopefully you'll be pleased to see. Um, this is actually a hanging basket. And I think this is a lovely thing to do on your front porch or wherever you enjoy having 
a hanging basket. And so these are all fresh, live cut greens with a, a little bow if you'd like to put a bow or not. So I'm going to tell you in just a few minutes what's inside that container that's going to have it last well through Christmas and beyond. I have actually had them last through January and into February, okay? So hanging baskets. Now, let me make one comment. People have asked me, can I just put these fresh cut greens directly into the soil of my containers? And my answer to that is, yes, you can do that. I personally don't do that, haven't done that, but I've heard from many customers that they have had it last through the holidays when they have done that. I do not think it will have near the longevity that using the wet oasis, which I'll talk to you about. Now there's another one, Mrs. Sally. <coughs> Excuse me. These are fantastic, whether it's on a patio, or it's beside your front door. This, this is actually uh, one that Kelly took uh, downstairs yesterday and it's staged in front of one of our doors down there. And, and usually we do them in pairs. There are urns behind it that are planted up with boxwood and um, pansies, etc. Those will go through the winter and be beautiful. So they're lovely. But the one in front of it is done in Oasis and it's cut stems. And I wanted to show you that what I'll be talking about is pretty much the traditional container, but certainly you can do things that are not traditional. And I did this actually on my back deck. Now, it's a little difficult for you to see the detail in this because there's a lot going on in the background that's sort of distracting to the eye of the camera. It isn't when you're standing there on the deck. And so I actually, within this container, have the oasis, the wet oasis, and to the side is the false holly, and the, the, it's uh, Gosinki, okay? That's, that's the varietal name, okay? And then there are large bunches of the winterberry holly and magnolia and the weeping spruce. And I really do enjoy this because it's very different. And so don't be afraid to do something that is very different, okay? So I think that's the list of the arrangements. We'll hold the video for a little bit and let's come in and talk first. Fresh greens. Here at the garden centers, at all three garden centers really, we have a lot of beautiful fresh cut greens. Lots of variety. Lots of contrast among them. They are bought in. When we get them in, the stems are cut and put into shallow, warm water so that they immediately become rehydrated and will last for a long period of time. If you are cutting greens from your own garden, then Cut those greens, take them inside, and put them in a container of warm water and let them absorb that water for at least a couple of hours before you start arranging. This will definitely hydrate them well. And then when you put them into your wet oasis, as I said, these containers have been known to last well into February, okay? Now, how do I do that? After they're all conditioned and ready to work with, I did, can you hand me that, Kelly? Yeah. There are many ways that you can do this. Now, this will be a large one, and this is a plastic container. 
whatever you use to put in either your container at home or one that you purchased here, perhaps, this holds water. And it is an insert that I use in, in containers that are the proper size to fit this into. What is inside of here is a product called Oasis. This absorbs water, so you wanna soak this well ahead of time, so it takes at least 30 minutes for it to thoroughly absorb all the water that it can. What is in here is two pieces a wet oasis placed inside this container. And then I cut half of this. I'm going to cut this for you, okay? So you'll need to have a knife handy, okay? So I've got my two pieces of wet oasis in this container. And it's not really stable. This is going to be subjected to the wind and the rain and whatever you have going on outside. And so it needs to be as stable as possible. So I am going to make this cut, as I said, pretty much a triangle down to here. So intrigued with my little great granddaughter, three year old who's walking my pathway saying, Mammy, that's a triangle. That's a rectangle, that's a square. What, you're three years old? Okay, good. All right, I cut that piece in half. And then I cut triangles because this is what's going to brace those two pieces. And I'm going to have to cut a little piece off each side of this. So this is how you do it. And then I put those two pieces, press them down into this. So what you have in here, are two full pieces of oasis and these two that are going to support it. Now, when you put them in, they're wet. So then you add warm water to the tippy top just to keep it as moist as you possibly can. Then depending upon uh, the type of arrangement and what you want to use, uh, this particular one, this greens is cryptomeria. And so I decided how tall I wanted this container to be and approximately how wide I wanted it to be. And this is the first piece that I inserted. When you do this, these first biggest pieces especially need to be pushed well down into this oasis because as I said, they're gonna be subjected to the weather outside. And then, because I wanted this to be the tallest piece and I'm going to add some other things, I chose to do four pieces to round out the shape of this, but shorter. And they likewise are pressed deeply into this oasis. Okay. What would I like to do next? I'm not going to be able to really finish this arrangement, so let's not be too critical of what I do. I want you to just get the general idea. I have on hand always my tools. I'm very particular with my tools because I don't want to look around for them. I want them to be right where I know they are and can use them. And one of those tools that are almost constant use in my garden is Felco pruners. They absolutely will make a wonderful Christmas gift for someone yourself or someone special because they are special. And if you take really good care of them, they will last for a very long time. Okay, I have a tall piece of boxwood. And I am going to cut here. And I'm going to strip these bottom pieces off because I don't I want to be very careful. Oasis is something you make a decision where you want to put something and you go ahead and put it there because you can't put it in and in and out because it'll tear it up and then it's of no value. So I'm going to place this in between 
Now, one of the beauties of using the boxwood with this cryptomeria is that it's a contrast of texture. And I love that. Okay, this one is pretty good. I think that I'm going to just cut a little bit, make a fresh cut and remove a few of these bottom leaves again, because I don't want it to take up too much space in this. And now I am going to place that one again, sort of quartering it, and then you'll go back and fill in. I'm really disappointed that I forgot to bring my turntable today because I, that would have made it much easier for me. I want to cut enough of these greens that you understand how I cut them. I want to put another nice big piece in through here. So I'm going to make another cut. And to be sure that this is clear of foliage down here. And I'm going to press that over into this side down very firmly. Now, you don't want to throw away your small pieces. Every little piece of these greens is valuable. So I need some filler in here that's close in so that you don't see the oasis and that it looks finished. And so I'm going to cut that. Again, remove some of those bottom leaves and press that as a filler down inside of here. Okay, I'm going to do that just to show you the filler idea. Um, I'll, here again, you'll, you'll get pieces like so. So cut them, cut them, cut them. I think I'll put these pieces in as they are because they're so nice. You want it to come out over your container. So you're going to place this on an angle deeply inside. And again, you can quarter it and then go back and fill in. Removing again. See how I'm pressing that down inside of there. And then I'm going to just work on finishing this because I don't want to take the time to completely finish all of this. Okay, another change of texture. And I, I really do enjoy working with all of these various, um, various things. This one is staghorn cedar. And I don't want to use this and, and press it into that oasis. So it, it's to me more beautiful on the back side than it is on the front. So this is a wonderful one to press deeply in and come out over. Alrighty. Now, this little piece, again, that I cut off can be placed inside of there as filler. Here's another little piece. And I keep on hand another thing. Okay, I have my velcro fruiter right here in front of me. I have also my George chins. These I have everywhere, in my purse, in my car, in my shed, in my kitchen, because they're useful for all those things. So I make that cut, the small pieces with the choice gems. And again, use that as filler. Okay. So we're pretending that I'm really finishing this off as I go along. What else? I think I'll put maybe another piece or two. Okay, this is a good thing. This is a good thing because I can show you how you can use this also. This is a big piece. So I'm going to cut this here. And then I'm going to remove those bottom pieces from this. And I'll use those as filler. But with the length of this, I can also bring that up into this area and press it down very firmly. And it's, it's very nice for creating that overall traditional design. And then you see, I can come back in here 
firmly, it's very important that I say firm, okay? I can put this one in like so, but it's got a big stem, so I think I won't. I think I'm going to cut that. So this is how I cut these things. And this is lovely. Let's see where that's best. Over in here, okay? This will give you a general idea of what it's like when it's finished. I think I'll add just a little bit more of this boxwood before I leave you this. Let's place this right in here, nice and firmly. Okay. And then, not wasting any of my beautiful greens, pressing that deep inside, this one over here. Okay, now I'd like you to pretend that I have finished this all the way around because that's what I would do. I'm going to take a look at it and decide do I want to put magnolia in? Well, maybe not today. Although one could place magnolia right in there if you chose to do that. But let's don't do that today, okay? Now, what we also have in abundance out there, and I love the story, which I try to tell every year of, of these berries. Many years ago, because we go to a lot of trade shows, to meet and greet the people we do business with or to learn about new people or new plants or new so anything. And many, many years ago, one of the people that we dealt with had, had two sons growing up and he planted the Alex Batisalata, the winterberry, for his sons, for it to grow on and um, put them through college. And it did. And now those young men of today that we see every now and then are just so delightful. And you know what they named their company? The Brothers Berry. I just think that's the most beautiful story. And so this is where these berries come from. They are over in Maryland and they grow acres of this winter berry and it's from the Brothers Berry. And it lasts for a very long time, particularly when it is placed um, into this oasis. And again, um, I think this piece, some of them are really large. This one, let's put it over here. Now remember, this is, this is done all the way around, okay? So pretending that this is finished as I've done that all the way around, okay? What else can we do with this? We could put some of the red stems in to give it some height. And I didn't bring those up here because it doesn't go tall enough for that. There are stems in this one back here. So I put those berries in. It can have those stems. It can also have beautiful pine cones. I love natural. I love pine cones. I have done so many things with pine cones over the years. And there, there's a bit of a technique to being able to use these well. I think I keep reaching because I, I'm not sure this, I'm all ad-libbing this, so I'm not sure just what's coming from where wire there are different kinds of wire the gauge or size of that wire is very important the wire that we use to tie our bows with here is very fine because you have to be able to pull it very tight it's a very fine wire it's usually 26 gauge 26 gauge going up is smaller this one is six, 18 gauge, 18 gauge, because I want this to hold that pine cone up straight. And here's how I do it. With this piece of wire, 
I let it extend out the side. I'm pulling it very firmly through those cone pieces and then wrapping it very carefully like so. You see it standing up straight there. Now, the fun thing is that you, one of the uses, and there are many, is to be able to place that. Now I've got a lot of stems in here, so that little wire may need a little moving around to get it down where I wanted to go, okay? And I do usually, I didn't spray that one, okay? Most of them I do spray with uh, crystal clear glaze. Yeah, here we go. This is Design Master product, crystal clear glaze. I love to use it on the pine cones because it doesn't change the natural look of them, but it gives them a slight sheen that makes them a little brighter. And I love to use several of these. Okay. Now, here again, pretend that's finished all the way around. So that's kind of fun. Now, if you wanted to, you could also add a bow. Those are always good, okay? Or not. And this, of course, would be in your container or one of ours outside. Let's talk a little bit, though, about those containers outside. They need to be somewhat weatherproof. I'm not going to tell you that my terracotta or some of the other uh, nicely fired things are going to be perfect outside. You may lose one now and then, but I haven't for a very long time. The thing of it is, do not leave one of your containers, ceramic or um, terracotta, on bare ground because they'll take up that moisture and, and are subject to cracking. I like to stage them either on pot feet or on a riser of some sort, or on the steps, on the patio, that all works beautifully, um, on the porch, anywhere, just not on their ground, okay? Now, as far as taking care of this is concerned, I would I add water, particularly in the first three or four weeks. I like to go out and from the top, because that's where it dries out from, with warm water, you add however much it takes to, to fill up that container, okay? But add it from the top because that's how it will moisten that oasis again. Now, is this going to be absolutely necessary? Maybe not. If we get rain and it's outside, it's going to get wet and that's good. It's outside and it's cool. It's not subjected to the heat of your house. And do I worry about it once I'm through Christmas into January? No, I don't. It's probably going to freeze and that's okay because it's going to last anyway. And I just love it because of that. Now, Kelly, can you help me with this girl over the side? Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Um, okay. Let's let's talk about um some of the other things that you can do outside and how you can do that. A lot of you have hanging baskets. I know that you do because we sell a tremendous number of hanging baskets. And so you certainly can use your existing basket. I'm very fond of these ornate ones. Yes, they are more expensive, but they last such a long time. And they have the nice liners. And the beauty of it is after a year or two, we sell the replacements for this too. So they have longevity to them and they're pleasant to look at. And thank goodness I have a, a lovely covered uh, porch. Now I, I don't have baskets on it. I do a lot of other things, but I do know that a lot of people hang their baskets from their front porch 
and you can fill them with greens for the winter and it's lovely. Okay, I want to do it again in Oasis. And so you want to have something that's going to hold the water inside because the water's going to run right through this. There are different methods of doing this. And this applies to the arrangement that I just did. You need to put an insert into your container that holds water. And you don't want it to be glass because that'll break. You, it needs to be some sort of plastic. If you don't have, or one of these that we do sell them, um, you can use, and I sometimes do, the foil that we use in the greenhouse, I will shape to fit in there so it'll hold water. And this is very substantial, but I realize not all of you have that. You can use heavy duty foil or plastic. And then put your wet oasis inside of here. Similarly to how I did that, couple of blocks standing up with other blocks bracing it so that it's big enough to hold the greens firmly and it's nice and stable. But again, either with plastic or heavy duty foil um, or a liner from the greenhouse that you can sit that the oasis into. What you don't want to do if you're using foil, aluminum foil or from the greenhouse is puncture that when you're putting your stems in. Because if you do, you've lost your water holding capacity, okay? So that's how we do this. And, and you did see the picture earlier of the um, wonderful basket that a lady just bought, by the way. Now let's talk for a moment about window boxes. A lot of people do utilize window boxes and they are, they are possibly filled with soil now. Maybe you don't you haven't put any pansies or any kale inside. There are many things that you can do with this. And again, you can line this with plastic and put the oasis in it and put your greens in it. You may want to put a lovely bow on the front of it. You may want to use a lot of pine cones in it. Certainly, uh, the greens are just lovely and magnolia is beautiful in this. So if you don't want to go the oasis route, then try to really wet your soil well and then push these down inside. They're not going to absorb water like they will out of oasis, but you can get some longevity out of that. You know, it's, it's really nice. So these are some of the things that you can do with your, um, your absolutely beautiful um, containers outside. <laughs> I think we have, I want to share with you Actually, it's a video that Bryn and I did in my backyard last year or the year before I lost track of which. Um, and it's using a lot of natural materials. And we're saying, this is a container for winter. It's a container for winter. It's a container for, for any kind, you know. Um, but it's using all the materials that we picked that day from my garden. So I want to share that with you. The garden in winter, color in winter. Yes, you can have it all. I wandered through my garden to select the plants that I wanted to put into this large container. I wanted contrast, contrast of color and contrast of texture. This Mahonia, evergreen Mahonia, is such a fantastic plant. It grows with a lot of shade too has beautiful, beautiful flowers in the winter time. 
And then when the flowers are finished, gets beautiful deep blue berries, which the birds eat. Contrasting with that again, an evergreen, is the beautiful cypress that's back here. This deep, deep green, and then the blue-green of the blue atlas cedar. We also have a great contrast with the color, the color of the nandina. I do love nandina in the garden, and the berries are beautiful, although I haven't used them in this. And there's also a deep maroon back here from the Pyrrhus japonica. Now, a great contrast and beautiful in the garden are the ornamental grasses. This particular one is really very airy, and I love the curly cues of the grasses. Up above that, I wanted some stems, but I wanted them to be interesting. And so I went to my deciduous magnolia, and I picked some beautiful branches from that. And it has the swelling buds that says, Spring will come. So I did enjoy doing that. And, and I love the beauty of it and the naturalness of it. And I think it's it would be lovely in the Christmas season. Now, I firmly realize that some of you who have the ornamental grasses may have cut them back already. But if you haven't and they've got the beautiful plumes on them, it, it's a little late in this season. Um, and so they've begun to get fluffier and, and not as strong. But here again is an, a wonderful use for that Design Master uh, Glaze Spray. You can spray them with this and it's, it's somewhat adhesive and will keep them from further disintegrating. And so I think you can certainly use them if you have them. Um, I haven't used them in any of my things that I've done here for, for uh, customers this year, but I have done it in the past and it works just beautifully. And of course we do have the various branches that you can use to put in it. So I hope that you have enjoyed um, using plants from your own garden. And as I said, the condition them and they'll last a lot longer those were definitely placed within that container uh, into oasis that's wet and you keep it wet and it lasts forever, almost, almost. Um, there is something that, that is certainly not an outdoor thing, but I really want to mention to you because the first Sunday of Advent was Sunday. And there are a lot of people myself included, because I used the bear ring because I had time to do the greens, but I am going to do the greens in it this week. And how is this made? There, there are definitely rings that are set into actually a plastic container that holds water from the greenhouse. And it could be any container that you have. A plate is not deep enough to hold water to keep this moist because you want it to last indoors where there's heat for a month. And so you've got to keep this moist if you, if you want to have that happen. And you don't want it to be a fire hazard, okay? So these are little picks that go into here because there's four candles. And then there is a tape that's very good because if you don't tape it, it'll sometimes wiggle back and forth, and that's not good. So I'm going to tape the, these on. And here is, here is how I do it to make it very stable. I'm going back and forth with this, like so, pulling it under, going back to the other side, pulling it under. I'm going to do this again. Okay, and then I'm going to cut that if I can find my little Joyce chin scissors under the debris that I've got here. Okay, like so. Nice and firmly. And I'll do it to all four and then place my candles inside. 
And then it's just a matter of however big you want this to be. And this is mixed greens. Let's say I'm going to use this boxwood. I want it like so. And you will press that down inside firmly. And you can use even the small pieces for this, removing the little bottom area and fill as you go. You'll need to be careful with the inside of this and not getting it too, too full. And so you'll come back and use some of the shorter pieces, perhaps on an angle in here. So it just takes a little time to do that and to fill it all in. And then you have something as beautiful as this. Okay, love that. Okay, I unfortunately was not able to bring up a kissing ball. Um, Norma does the most beautiful kissing balls. And we have a lot of people come in and she special orders for them. And she creates it in this oasis ball from which she hangs her ribbons and then fills in with her greens, but this is wet, okay? Now, most of the time this would be hanging in your house. So if, if you want it to last from now until Christmas, it's probably a good thing to take it down maybe once a week and take it to your kitchen sink and soak it quite well. Let it drain off because you don't want it to drip in the foyer. And after it's dripped off, rehang it, okay? That is, that's taking care of these things that you want to last indoors for a full month. And actually next week, we are going to um, talk about the indoor arranging. Okay, um, this is gonna be a little precarious, Kelly. It has water in it. You wanna sit that one down and then we'll sit this one over on the corner. See, I can't get along with that, Kelly. She was just a wonderful, talented helper. Oh, see, it's, yeah, water. It's, it's, keeps us alive. I should have done that one though. <laughs> keeps us alive, but keeps that alive too. Okay, I want to do, and you'll have to be a little forgiving here because my hands, aren't quite as nimble as they once were. But I still can do some bows, even though, um, oh, I think this one would be fun to work with, okay? Let's do a bow really quickly. Many years ago, 45 years ago, when I began work at the garden center, I had been taught how to make a specific bow. And so when I came to help get started with a number of things, I taught them all how to make what became the Maryfield bow. Huh, I think that's funny. No, it won't be, maybe. I'm looking at these little birdies and with this streamer, they're all standing on their heads. Okay, they're gonna stand on their head, okay. Here is how I, I decide on the first streamer but I have my taped fine wire handy. Yes, ma'am, thank you, Kelly. Right there, all right. I am going to gather this and I'm not gonna do that little center loop because people are a little too confused about it. I am going, all right, this streamer is on this side. I am going to make the first loop on the opposite side and I am going to gather this together with my thumb and fingers holding it. I am going to turn it and put the second loop on the opposite side because you cannot put two loops on the same side, you will drop it. Okay, so the streamer is here, the first loop is here, the second loop is on the opposite side, I am gathering this again, holding it between the thumb and fingers, twisting it to make the third loop, and gathering it again, 
going to the opposite side, making my fourth loop, go back to the center. I'm going to put a loop here and a loop here, okay? Loop here and loop here. And then I, I'm, I'm going to stop there because I'm running out of time. I'm going to reach over and pull that down, twisting it as I go, pick up that wire, place it over everything that I'm holding, pull it firmly to the back, and twist, pulling tightly, twist. I am going to cut this. David, there's not gonna be any time for questions today because I've got a couple of fun things to share. Okay, and you have your bow. All right, there's another thing that we do at all three locations. <coughs> There is some differences, minor differences in our locations. Here at the Fair Oaks location, we concentrate much more heavily on the fresh greens arrangements, both indoor and outdoor. And all three locations we do beautiful reeds. And Leo has a wonderful group of people working with him but everybody around knows who Leo is because Leo does a lot of our special orders. And isn't this wreath magnificent? It is a wonderful mix of greens. He's done it with all magnolia, he's done it with all boxwood, and he's done it with mixed greens in various sizes. And they have a very sort of crude, shall I say, machine that they use to pinch this together. So these are our custom reeds and you can use it with or without uh, a bow, okay? Let me see if I can grab this like so. They're totally, totally beautiful. So those are our custom made reeds. Now I do want to mention quickly that um, all of these reeds are dipped, whether they are bought in ones or the, or the custom made ones, are dipped in wilt proof and drained off and dried so that they seal in that moisture and have greater longevity. Okay, I'm almost out of time and I want to share something fun. So I've done this before. I did it at Miss Billie Jean Warhurst years ago because we had put a gorgeous magnolia runner down her staircase and it had dried out, okay? So after the season last year, I made up a few of these reeds. If something dries out, don't panic. This is actually a magnolia wreath that Leo did last year. And it's a little fragile right now, but I did a couple of them. This one, I did not spray at all. And actually it could be used year round, okay? I did spray one with the gold, so it was brown and gold. And my daughter confiscated it a couple of weeks ago and hung it over her mantle. And it's absolutely beautiful. So if, if something dries out, don't despair, thank you, Kelly, because um, many, many years ago, uh, a friend wrote in the yearbook, because yearbooks were very popular back then, and it said, lipstick and rouge, powder and paint, makes a plain girl like you look what she ain't. And I've always remembered that was in my little book, okay? But we have made something, look what they ain't, spraying the magnolia leaves that are dry. These are from last year. Can you imagine this? <laughs> truly, with even just about, now this wouldn't be good for outside, but inside with just a bow. 
It's beautiful to use and, and it's lovely even with this. What? Just a little gold paint. Our trunk mats are fantastic. Put it outside, don't do this inside. Put it outside, just shield the brown because the brown is what makes it delightful and spray with the gold. Okay, what happens if some of your other things dry out? This is cryptomeria and it dried out. So I sprayed it gold. Uh, bronze spray is another one that I like to spray with. Now, silver too. I just don't happen to be a silver person, but a lot of people are. So I have used the, the gold and the bronze primarily, okay? Now, fun things from your own garden. I love, I love to take advantage of what I have there. And, and I love to teach even, even my children and now my little great grandchildren um, what's growing outside and what can you use. So walking through the garden, I saw the, the, the um, cinnamon fern had thrown up its fruiting fronds. Now the leaves are gone down, but I have all, and I have a lot of this, and it, it is native, which is wonderful, but it's, it's dry. And I love it in that brown color, but you could spray these also, and it would be beautiful in arrangements. Maybe next week I will try to do an arrangement using some of this. So kind of bear in mind, you're gonna to say to me, well, Peg, I don't have those things, okay? Um, that's okay. Um, plant them. <laughs> this is an idea for the future. Plant some of this cinnamon fern. If you've got a lot of shade, you really can't beat uh, the, the fern. Okay, I think I do have time to share quickly one more thing here because I mentioned to you that we do the custom reads. If you chose to do it yourself, we sell and, and you can buy the rings, okay? This is different. And there is then another kind of wire, the spool wire. And what you have to do with this is cut a bunch of greens First, you tie your wire here, nice and firmly, firmly. Put your bunch, wrap it two or three times, put another bunch, wrap it two or three times, put another bunch, wrap it two or three times until you're all the way around. So you can do it yourself with that also. I think that we have pretty much gone through the basics of all of this. Um, don't forget to, to use the prolong. We, this is a wonderful thing to put into those arrangements. Actually, I did not mention this to you, but when I'm soaking my oasis, I put according to the directions, it says three teaspoons to a quart of water. I don't know that I measure carefully, but pour approximation of that and let it soak that up. It helps to kill some of the bacteria. And by all means, if you have a fresh um, tree in your house with a reservoir for water, keep adding warm water that has prolong in it. It's fantastic. Well, David, I think we've pretty much finished up for the day today. And there really isn't any time for questions. All right. Well, Peggy, thank you. That was extremely informative. Uh, we do have several questions, but uh, I'll get back to everybody uh, via email. So we'll follow up with you on that. Uh, again, Peggy, you make it look so easy, but I know that's a result of many years of practice. It's been enjoyable. Actually, we have a little more than five minutes. Is there a question or two that I could answer? Uh, that would be fantastic. If okay, we let's try it. Take a little bit of your time. Okay. Uh, first of all, Christine was asking, is there a specific evergreen that you like to use as fillers when you're making arrangements? Well, I, I have a tendency to use anything as a filler um, as I'm going along. Magnolia is not a good filler. 
Uh, it's, it's an accent, okay? So that would not be a choice. Boxwood has got to be my absolute favorite filler if you want to come right down to it. But even if you've got a Leyland Cypress outside or a Juniper outside, they make great fillers also. Yeah, and that's one thing I know. It's like in your video and throughout all these, you're very resourceful and basically working with what you have available. Yes. Yeah. So yes, and, very. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I think that really gives your um, arrangements, you know, very distinctive quality and everything. But but yeah, I've seen, I agree that you've got uh, what Cryptomeria in there and Arborvite yes. and Hollies. And, right. And I use all those little pieces. I never throw them away. That becomes part of my filler. Yeah. So I also had um, several questions about the Oasis, which uh, I see you're using a lot of different arrangements. One, just one confirm that we do have that available at all three of the stores. And the other would be, do you ever um, work with chicken wire as an alternative to that? You can absolutely work with chicken wire. There are, there's more than one way to do almost everything. Um, the Oasis is the easy path. And yes, availability has been an issue with a number of things throughout the world, okay? And, and at first we were having a little difficulty getting some of the Oasis or uh, what we thought was going to be enough. But fortunately, we were able to find a supplier that had an adequate supply on hand and we now have it on hand, okay? Now, when you're going to the various locations, all of our locations are great. And we have some very talented people at all three locations. And certainly we do the custom reads at all three locations. We focus heavily on, on custom arrangements here, okay, at this location and have a lot of the supplies on hand. So by all means, go to Maryfield, see what they've got, go to Gainesville, see what they've got, and then come here. Okay. <laughs> And um, sort of to that end also, because I, I haven't looked out in our fresh greens as much as I should, we have plenty of boxwood available here at, at the Fair Oaks location, correct? Because I think we've had trouble finding it some of the other places. We have had some issues getting enough boxwood, and that may continue. But you know, we're going to do the best that we can with what we have. We just got in additional boxwood today, and hopefully there'll be plenty tomorrow. But that's what we're living with today, is a little bit more difficulty in obtaining some of the things, because we have to buy them in. We don't grow these things. Um, certainly I have quite a few, fortunately, boxwood of my own at home that I can supplement to some degree, but that's a small degree. Uh, we're going to keep working on it, but we could be short on boxwood. You just have to say, I really don't want to do boxwood. I want to do something different this year. Okay. <laughs> okay. And just a couple quick ones before we wrap this up. Uh, with the bows and the ribbons, uh, we are they all suitable for outdoor use? Or what do we yes. look for if it's an outdoor arrangement? Uh, it, it would be a minuscule amount that might not be as good outside, weatherproof, weather resistant. Okay. Yes, they are. And one last question, which would uh, be a good segue out of here, of uh, arrangements for indoors, you know, centerpieces for the table and such, uh, swags along railings. Are you covering that in future classes? That will be next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we're going to have another kind of fun with fresh arrangements. Which is a perfect lead into saying, Peggy, thank you again for sharing all your knowledge and experience with us today. Everybody was able to join us today. Thank you for joining us. And most importantly, stay tuned because next week, uh, Peggy will be sharing great ideas for decorating inside your home. So thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. And we'll see you around. Thank you, David. It was fun. <laughs>